Welcome in the sixth section of our course. In this course, we will see how to design for resilience and fault tolerance. So when creating application, often we need to execute HTTP requests to the third party services. When we are executing such requests, we need to specify some sane defaults for timeouts and according to SLA. So in this section, first we will be configuring socket at request timeout for REST template. So we will see how to specify those configuration for REST template using underneath mechanism. Then we'll be separating REST templates per client microservice. So often in a microservice, we want to and we need to execute requests to the different microservices. And those different microservices have different SLAs. So it means that we need to specify different timeouts for them. We will be doing that in the second video. Then we'll be guarding against failure with circuit breaker logic. So if something goes wrong with that request, we will fall back to the specific logic. Finally, we'll be using retry template to retry in case of a failure of a downstream service. So we'll be specifying numbers of retries and we'll be testing that logic. This is a first video in which we'll be configuring socket and request timeout for our REST template. So we'll be configuring request config, we'll be picking underlying HTTP client for REST template because REST template is an abstraction atop of the HTTP client. We can pick whatever client we want. Then we'll be choosing timeouts for this specific client. So choosing timeout mechanism is specific for the HTTP client. We need to do it on this level. So we will have a configuration. So it means that Spring will scan that configuration and it will create a proper beans accordingly. So we have a REST template configuration and we will need to specify REST template settings. So here we will create a REST template bin using REST template. So what we need to do. So firstly, we need to create a polling HTTP client connection manager. And that manager, we need to take a max total and max per root. There are two properties that every HTTP client should have. So we are creating pooling HTTP client connection manager and we are specifying max total. Max total is number of maximum concurrent requests that could be executed using this specific client. Then different setting that is at the lower granularity stays default max per root. So it states how many concurrent requests should be and should be allowed to execute for a specific root. So if you are executing requests for an HTTP service, the HTTP service can have four example reactive endpoint and MVC. So max per root is specifying that per that specific root. So we are specifying max per root here. And finally, we are returning that pooling manager with those settings. So we'll have a pooling manager with max total 20, max per root also 20. Then we need to specify a request config. So here we'll specify connection timeout and socket timeout. So we are creating request config using custom properties. First one is connection request timeout. It states how long wait for a connection from a connection manager. So it will wait for a connection manager to create that connection to the external service. Then we have a connect timeout. So this is how long wait for establishing the actual connection. So if there will be no connection in the connection manager, then this timeout applies, but the connection also needs to be created using this connection timeout. So the first request to the external service is bounded by this connection timeout. So here we can see that we specify that as the two seconds. So it will wait up to two seconds to execute request to the third party and to initialize that connection. Then once the connection is created, there is a socket timeout. So when you are executing HTTP requests, you are retrieving packet by packet that those packets are creating and composing into one response. So sometimes you can have a mid failure. So it means that you are waiting between packets too long. So there is a socket timeout exactly for that. If you will have it too big, so let's say if it will be like some six nines, our connection will be blocked. So this thread that is associated with this connection will be blocked and we will not be able to execute requests using that connection. This is not an ideal solution. We want to get a timeout error and act accordingly. We can retry, we can do some fallback mechanism, 
but this is a key to configure that properly at this level. Once we have our connection manager and request config, we are ready to create HTTP client. So we are creating HTTP client using HTTP client builder. We are calling create, passing connection manager that we just configured and request config. So at this level, we are sure that we have connection timeout specified, socket timeout, max total and max per root. And we have a client that is a closable HTTP client. Once we have that client, we can use HTTP components client HTTP request factory and using that factory to create the specific client. That request factory is from Spring ecosystem and we can just pass that factory to the REST template and return that REST template. Using that mechanism and those components, we are ready to use REST template in a configurable way and in a safe way.